Hello everyone, and welcome to my General Hospital YouTube channel. I hope everyone is having a wonderful day. Before we begin, please hit the subscribers button and give this video a thumbs up. Nina acknowledged in the confessional that she was in need of assistance and had nowhere else to turn. Cyrus, assuming the role of the opposing priest, counseled that God was willing to assist all of his children. Nina discussed how her actions had been out of control due to her spite. She wanted to go back in time and repair all the harm she had caused because she was unaware of how many people her actions would affect. She clarified that she had unnecessarily reported a crime to the police and that she was placing the blame for reporting the crime on an innocent individual. Cyrus suggested that Nina tell the individual she had injured, but she didn't think she was capable of doing so. The truth will always set you free, he answered back. He told her to have courage and to never forget that God was always at her side. She departed after thanking him. A little while later, Cyrus was asked if he had noticed a woman waiting in the church by the priest when he entered. The priest expressed remorse for not having had a chance to speak with the woman when Cyrus replied that he had witnessed her leave. The priest pondered whether Cyrus was asking for himself or a friend and Cyrus questioned how the priest assisted individuals in releasing their burdens. Cyrus said he would welcome some suggestions because he had a friend who was feeling lost and alone that evening. The priest felt that the buddy was fortunate to have Cyrus watching out for them. He left, believing that confession was healing for the soul. Cyrus whispered that he would have to do what was right for Nina's soul if she didn't. After dousing himself with holy water, he departed. When Ava first arrived at Windermere, she noticed the living room's damaged window. Her security company was contacted when her phone rang. They informed her that the PCP were on their way and that there had been an alert signal. She pulled a revolver out of her purse and hung up muttering, It might be too late. Dandy arrived at that moment and questioned her presence. She asked him if he intended to arrest her for protecting herself in her own house and reminded him that it was still her property. Carly and Laura were talking about how much fun the party was at the hospital. Laura thanked Sonny for providing the funding for everything as he came over. Carly told her that Bobby was making headway with Luke's affairs, even though it was the first year without Bobby attending. Arriving, Nina expressed her regret for missing the celebration. Sunny was the recipient of her confession that she had left church with a new understanding. At that moment, Sunny's phone rang, revealing that Windermere had been broken into. He was heading there to assist Ava. Laura wanted to go with him since she thought it would be relevant to Nicholas, so they departed. Carly was eager to take Donna home, but not until Nina spoke. She revealed that she had visited a church to seek advice for Carly. She wanted to apologize for not telling her that Sonny had been in Nixon Falls and for seeking retribution by holding Carly responsible for Nell's passing. She went on to say that although she aimed to be a better person, she still had damaged parts. Nina was stopped by Carly, who told her that she wouldn't be able to find redemption with her. Carly didn't think she had given Nina enough, so she didn't ask for forgiveness. It's been a long day for me, Carly stated. All I wanted to do was go home with my family and enjoy what was left of Christmas Eve. And she turned to go. A knock on the door at Windermere occurred as Ava was turning on the lights, so she allowed Sunny and Laura in. Laura volunteered to take Dante on a tour of the house because she was familiar with it. Reluctantly, Don consented, but only on the condition that she follow him because the house wasn't yet cleared. Sunny pondered whether Ava believed the intruder to be the same person who had emailed Ava the images of Austin after they had left. In addition, he implied that the person was manipulating her in order to gain his favor. And he considered the possibility that Cyrus was the offender. Ava told Sunny that although she had enemies of her own, she could defend herself, even though she would have loved to hold Cyrus accountable. Sunny insisted that she move in with him while he tried to figure out what was going on. As Esme sat on the parapet, she was struck with flashbacks to all of her transgressions. She pulled out her phone in tears. Ace was in his bed as Spencer and Trina came out of his room. Being able to spend Christmas Eve with Ace and Trina made Spencer pleased. 
While Trinit implied that Ism was merely making plans, he believed that Esm had truly attempted to turn over a new Spencer leaf. Spencer was content For to be reason. alone in the apartment and planted a kiss on Trina. His phone rang right then. Spencer responded Esm with, Speak of the devil, while Trina went to fetch them something from the kitchen. Esm disclosed that she needed to talk to him about something else, despite his assurances that everything with Ace was all right. Esm abruptly paused mid-sentence as she heard Trina talking about eggnog in the background. She wished Spencer a Merry Christmas, abruptly informed him that she wouldn't be picking Ace up until the next day, and hung up. Trina had to leave and get home, but Spencer urged her to stay and gave her a kiss. Trina withdrew, wondering whether he thought Esmond had truly changed her mind. He said that although they couldn't possibly know, he wanted to think it. Trina reminded him that they were attempting to get Portia over to their way of thinking, so he urged her to inform her mother that she was not able to get a ride-sharing. They kissed again till her phone rang and told her that her ride-sharing had arrived. She gave him another kiss and said she would see him in the morning. Crying, Esm chastised herself in the sitting room for ever considering telling Spencer the truth about retrieving her memories. She was confident that he would have a happily ever after with Ace and Esmond and would never forget about Trina. She heard footsteps outside the room at that very moment. She went to the other side and opened the entrance to the parapet. Laura and Dante stepped into the chamber to investigate the parapet. After they left, Esm dashed out the room, leaving behind a glove. Dante could see nothing outside, but he hoped that forensics would uncover something. After they went back inside, Dante surveyed the space. He picked up the glove that was lying on the ground and put it in an evidence bag. Although Laura was unable to identify it, she pondered whether Nicholas might have owned it. Dante retorted that he didn't see anything that would suggest Nicholas had been there and that it wasn't a man's glove. Laura suggested that it was Ava's, understanding she was thinking too emotionally. Esm reached Ryan's tomb just as the snow began to fall lightly. He hadn't been a terrific father who'd reared her, so she wasn't sure why she was there. But she reasoned that she could only tell him and Heather about her memories coming back. She spoke about how he had never taught her how to be a nice person, so she had to figure it out on her own. She talked about the nice life she had built for herself in Port Charles and how, because the emotion was so foreign to her, she didn't know she was happy. She grieved that Ryan had left her with such inheritance and questioned whether her nature predestined her to be evil. She pulled out her glove and looked about wildly, but when she saw she didn't have the other, her eyes widened. Thanks for watching if you like this video. So please don't forget to subscribe to my channel and don't miss any updates.